we are told that cos 35 is equal to m. Okay, so without even looking at the rest of the questions, when I see something like this, I immediately know what type of question this is. I'll show you. When they give you the angle, then I know that 35 is in quadrant number one. So I draw a little cast diagram for myself. So let's try to keep this as neat as possible. So there's a cast diagram. And I know that 35 is in the first quadrant. So I can draw my first little quadrant over there. And then immediately I can put the angle 35 like that. And then if you've watched some of these lessons with me before, you'll know what I always suggest. I always suggest that you go work out this angle as well, just in case they decide to ask that, because sometimes they do like to ask that. Okay, so if you had to go work that part out there, you would find out that that is going to be 55 degrees. Um, yeah, 55 degrees. Okay, so now what you do is you are going to take each of these questions and you are going to do whatever you need to do to them. And eventually they will somehow end up as something on these or some something in the triangle. Okay, it always works out like that. So if we start off with cos, of 215, we can rewrite that as the cos of 180 plus, um, 180 plus 35, I would imagine. Yes, plus 35. Now, we know that on the cost diagram, when you have cos of 180 plus, then cos is negative. So this is going to become negative cos of 35. And have a look at that. Now we can see that the cos 35 is already on the diagram. So you can use cos for that. The other thing you can do is realize that cos 35 has already been given to us as M. Oh, I haven't even gone and filled that in on the diagram. My bad. I haven't even filled that in on the diagram. Let me quickly do that. So guys, if they say cos 35 is equal to M, you can just say M over one. And then we should remember that cos is equal to X over R. Or if you prefer, you can think of cos as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so the adjacent will then be M and the hypotenuse will be one. And then we do good old Pythagoras and you should find that this is equal to one minus the square root of one minus m squared. Then we can go and work out um, these questions. And so negative cos 35, we already know that cos 35 is equal to m. And so you can just say negative m like that. And so the answer for the first question is negative m. Then for 5.2.2, uh, this is a it's a good one. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So sometimes you've got to be quite clever with how they do this. And in this one, they're doing something quite sneaky. Check this out. If we look at sin 20, we can't really see how we could make 20 degrees. Um, there's nothing on the triangle, but we could minus these two from each other. So we could say that the sin of 20 is the same as the sin of 55 minus 35. That's quite interesting. I don't see many of those. And that's going to be a compound angle. This is a compound angle over here. You know what I'm talking about? When you have, for example, sin of alpha minus beta, we know from our, peri um, not our periodic table, from our um, formula sheet that that can be expressed as sin alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sin beta. That's what I'm talking about right now. And so this can become sin of 55 cos of 35 minus the cos of 55 times by the sin of 35. Uh, so for those of you that are wondering about cos 70, yes, you definitely can use a cos 70. I'll show you how to do that now. Mathematics is beautiful in the way that I thought of this way, but a lot of you thought of another way. But if it's mathematically correct, you will get to the same answer at the end. So I'll show you that way now as well. 
So um, let's have a look. So if I keep simplifying this, um, I can go get sin 55, cos 35, cos 55, and sin 35 using the triangle. Okay, so let's quickly do that. If we look at sin 55, we know that it's the opposite over the hypotenuse or the y over r. And so that would be m over 1 for this one. For cos 35, I already know that it's equal to m. So I can say m cos 55 will be the square root of 1 minus m squared over 1. I'm just using normal sin, cos, and tan ratios now. Okay. And I'm using the triangle to help me to get that. And then sin 35 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. And so that would be square root of 1 minus m squared over um, 1. OK, and so what we can do now is we can just simplify a little bit. So m times m is m squared minus. Now, whenever you have, whenever you have a square root multiplied with another square root, and the thing inside the square roots is the same, then the answer just becomes whatever is inside the square root. Don't believe me? I'll prove it to you. If you take square root 2 multiplied by the square root of 2, that becomes the square root of 4. But what is the square root of 4? It equals 2. So you see what I'm saying? That when these two numbers are the same, or when they are the same thing, then the answer just becomes whatever that is. So what that means is that this answer is just going to become 1 minus m squared. But because there is a negative over here, we must put it in a bracket. That's where some students make mistakes. So it must go in a bracket, 1 minus m squared like that. And so if we had to now go and simplify this, we would end up with m squared minus 1 plus m squared. And so that's going to give us 2m squared minus one as the final answer. Oh, I didn't even realize that I've clicked onto a different question. I'm so sorry. I don't know how long ago I did that. Um, and so that's just going to give us 2m squared minus one. Can we not take the sin 20? So you know how we start. So I'm starting this question again. So we can say that sin 20 is the same as cos 70. Why? Because of co-functions. Now we know that cos 70 is 2 times 35. So we can say cos 70 is equal to cos of 2 times 35, right? Now, whenever you have 2 times like that, you can use a double angle. You know on the formula sheet for cos, they give you three double angle formulas. Um, for example, cos of 2 alpha is equal to cos squared alpha minus sin squared alpha. Um, the other one is 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. Um, I just want to make sure I'm getting that one correct. Minus 1, yes. And then the other one is 1 minus 2 sin squared alpha. And you can choose whichever one of those you would like. So I'm going to say that cos of 2 times 35, and then I'm going to use this double angle over here. Um, I'm, I, you can choose any one you want, but I'm going to choose this one. Okay. And so that's going to end up becoming 2 cos squared 35 minus 1. And so we already know that cos 35, cos 35 is equal to m. Remember, they said that here at the top of the question. So we already know that that is m. So we can then say 2 m squared minus 1. And so we get the same answer whether we do it that way or whether we do it the way that we did it in the beginning. It doesn't really matter.